ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has once again blessed us with another Jum'ah, a Jum'ah in the blessed month of Ramadan, the month of fasting, the month in which the Qur'an was revealed, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Of course, as we know, fasting this is one of the main pillars of Islam, and it is a difficult action to perform. It's not something easy to leave off the most pleasurable things in life. is not something easy. We leave off our food. We leave off our drink. We leave off our desires. All for Allah's sake. As it says, comes in the hadith. Hadith Qudsi, يَتْرُقُ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابُهُ وَشَهْوَتُهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي That he leaves, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he leaves his food. He leaves his drink, he leaves his desires for my sake. It's something difficult. These things that we are leaving off, it is, they are already partially restricted to begin with. Outside of Ramadan, when we are not fasting, these things are already partially restricted. We cannot eat whatever we want. Allah says that you must eat what is halal and tayyib. We cannot eat whatever we want even outside of Ramadan. We cannot drink whatever we want outside of Ramadan. We cannot, we cannot fulfill our desires, however we want, outside of Ramadan either. So these things are already partially restricted. Then when we come into Ramadan, fasting in the day of Ramadan, they go from being partially restricted to completely restricted. And so of course this is something difficult. Even if you've been fasting for years, even if you've been fasting for decades, you still feel the difficulty of fasting. And perhaps many of us who are born Muslims, we grew up as Muslims, we know this concept of fasting, it is a bit easier for us. But the ones who really understand the difficulties are those who enter into Islam a bit later on. And then they are told that you have to fast, abstain from eating, abstain from drinking the entire day. And this can be something intimidating. And those who have reverted to Islam after, Having been in Kufa, they will understand better the difficulty of understanding this concept of leaving off these things uh, for Allah's sake. And the non-Muslims, they also express amazement and uh, oftentimes disbelief about what Muslims do in the month of Ramadan. And we, I'm sure we have all had co-workers, colleagues, friends, family who they are unable to grasp this concept. You leave off your food. You leave off your drink, not even water, you can't even have, you can't even have a sip of water. They are amazed at what the Muslims do. 
They are amazed at what the Muslims do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. So this is the concept of fasting. And even for those of us who have been fasting for years, it's still something that's difficult to do. So imagine how the Sahaba radiallahu anhum felt when this command first came, that they have to now observe fasting in the month of Ramadan. When Allah revealed the verses of fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah. And they are, now they are faced with this task, which is difficult. This is not something that they are used to. We are used to it. We've, been, we've grown up with Ramadan and fasting. The Sahaba were not used to fasting in the month of Ramadan or fasting in general. And so Allah revealed verses now obligating for them, you have to fast the month of Ramadan. So you can imagine the difficulty of uh, this task ahead of them and what they felt uh, in in inside of them in how it, it might have been intimidating this concept of fasting for them. And so we see that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He presents fasting in the Quran, He presents it in a very simplified and easy way. He makes a difficult task appear easy. And this is what we call in Arabic a tasheel. Tasheel is to make something difficult appear easy. Make something difficult appear easy. Ta'ala do that. When he mentions the obligation of fasting, he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The first way Allah makes the fasting, this concept of fasting easy on the Sahaba is that he tells them fasting has been prescribed for you as it has been prescribed for those before you. Allah brings precedent. He tells them that you are not the first people to fast. Others before you have fasted. And this is a very good motivational tool, an educational tool that you can use when somebody is facing a difficult task ahead of them. That you remind them that others before you have done the same thing. Somebody is learning a new concept, a new job, new something, learning to drive. You tell them that others before you have done this. If they have done this before, you can also do it. Others before you have fasted. So you can also fast. It's not something impossible. It's not something extremely difficult. There is difficulty, but others before you have done it. And so this is the first way Allah makes tasheel of the concept of fasting. That He brings the precedent of those who have fasted before you. They have done it before. You can fast as well. And Allah Azza wa Jal does this to the Prophet Sallallahu himself with regard to his mission. The Prophet Sallallahu had a very difficult mission spreading the message to the people. And he was faced with a whole lot of insults and abuse, verbal and physical abuse. So how does Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala comfort him and make this challenge, this difficult task easy? He refers him back to those who have done it before you. Fasbir kama sabara ulul azmi min ar-rusul. Be patient just like those before you were patient from the messengers of strong will and determination. There were messengers before you, O Muhammad, who came and they went through what you went through. So be patient as they were also patient. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verse of fasting, He references the fact that others before us have fasted. And so this is not something impossible for us to do. The second way Allah makes tasheel of fasting is in the very next verse. He says, Ayyaman ma'dudat. Numbered days. A few days. He did not say an entire month. Allah could have said, fasting has been obligated on you an entire month. Shahrun kamil. He didn't say a month, which is easier in terms of grasping the concept or making it appear easier and simpler. Saying you have to fast an entire month or saying you have to fast a number of days. Obviously, you tell somebody you have to fast a number of days, this is a lot easier to grasp, a lot easier to, uh, to understand, and a lot easier to uh, make it easy and simple for them. So he says, Ayyama ma'dudat, a few days, a number of days. And we use this type of language all the time when we are telling our kids to eat. What do we tell them? You have a few more bites left. All right, we don't tell them you have an entire plate in front of you, it's a few bites. A few sips and you'll be finished. Making it, even though there might be a lot left, but you make it simple and easy. And this will mentally help them to finish what they need to do. So Allah says, Ayyama ma'dudat. Number days, a few days. And subhanAllah, it is exactly how Allah says and describes it. 
as we are now entering, I believe, into the 13th night, night of Ramadan tonight. We are almost at the halfway point. Almost at the halfway point of Ramadan. And Ramadan just began, began a few days ago. And very soon, inshallah ta'ala, we will be gathering on the day of Eid and looking back at the Ramadan and saying the same thing, that it was just a few days ago that we began the month of Ramadan. So these are two ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simplified the concept of fasting for the Sahaba at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Allah made it easy on them and he makes it easy on us. We are fasting and for many of us, we are able to fast the entire month and really is very little difficulty because Allah makes it easy for us. If we were to summarize the concept of fasting in one word, the entire concept, somebody is asking you, describe what fasting is all about. One word that we can use to describe the entire concept of fasting is one word and that is patience. Patience. Patience describes the entire concept of fasting. The entire concept of fasting can be described in this one word, patience. And Allah has ordered us to seek help with patience. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aamanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. O you who believe, seek help with two things. With patience and with prayer. And some of the mufassirin have mentioned that what is meant by patience here is fasting. Meaning, seek help with fasting and prayer. Seek help with fasting and prayer. The Quran and the Sunnah is full of praise of the concept of patience and the people who are patient. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Allah is with the patient. He loves those who are patient. It will be said to the people on the Day of Judgment when they enter paradise. Salamun alaykum. Bima sabartum. Enter. Peace be upon you because of your patience. Multiple verses in the Quran praising patience. And same thing in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Multiple ahadith talking about and praising patience. Sabru diya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa calls patience a light. And he says in another hadith, وَمَا أُعْطِيَ أَحَدٌ عَطَاءً خَيْرًا وَأَوْسَعْ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ That no one has been given a gift that is better and more expensive than patience. So patience is the one word that we can summarize the entire concept of fasting. And our scholars have mentioned that patience is three types. There are three types of patience. The first type of patience is patience in the face of calamities and difficulties. And this is the type of patience that when we hear this word, this is what comes to mind. Patience in times of difficulties and in the face of calamities. And with regard to this patience, Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We will surely test you. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says that we will surely test, test you with things from fear and hunger and loss of wealth and loss of life and loss of fruits and give glad tidings to the patient. Those who are patient. This is the first type of patience. Patience in times of difficulties and calamities. The second type of patience and the third type, second type is patience regarding obe obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obeying Allah requires patience. And similarly, the third type, staying away from Allah's prohibitions. This requires patience. And these are the second and third types of patience. When we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it requires, it requires a great deal of patience on our part. Because when we perform actions, we pray, we give charity, we do all these good deeds. Do we see the result and the reward right away? Do we get the reward in this dunya? No, we don't. We might get partial reward. Allah might partially reward us for our good deeds in this life. But the full reward is with Allah in the, ne in the next life, in the hereafter. And so Allah commands us to do good works, do good deeds, pray, fast, and all the other good deeds. And, we, and he is telling us, you will not get your reward until Yawm al qiyam This requires patience to be able to do work, to work for something and not see the result. If somebody was to go for a job, you go for a job interview, 
and they tell you that you're going to get paid, but you'll get paid when you retire. You will work for years, and you're not going to get any money, any salary until you retire. Would anybody take a job like that? Nobody would take a job like that. Nobody would have patience to work and work and work for years, and they don't see the fruit of their labor. Nobody would do something like that. But Allah is telling us, perform these good deeds. Obey Allah, and your reward will come. But it will not come now. It will come in the next life. So it requires a lot of patience. And same thing, when we stay away from Allah's prohibitions, we are told, stay away from this sin, and that sin, and this prohibition, and that prohibition. We stay away from these things for Allah's sake. Do we see the reward of it now? No, we do not see the reward of it until the next life, until in the hereafter. So these require patience. To obey Allah requires patience. And to stay away from Allah's prohibitions requires patience. The concept of fasting combines all types, all three types of these patients. All three types of patients is combined in the fasting of Ramadan. قال ابن رجب رحمه الله ومن أفضل أنواع الصبر الصيام فإنه يجمع الصبر على الأنواع رجب رحمه الله he says that talking about patience he says and from the best types of patience is a صيام fasting for indeed it combines all three types all three types of patience when you're fasting you're suffering from hunger and thirst and this is a type of calamity as Allah says in the verse ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجور we will test you with fear and hunger hunger is a type of calamity and we are being tested with that every single day while we are fasting hunger and thirst when we are fasting we are constantly in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number two patient type number two patients type number two and when we are fasting we are staying away from the normal prohibitions in addition to the things that are specifically prohibited for the fasting, food, drink, and desires. So the fasting, it combines all three types of patience. And this is what makes fasting such a unique act of worship, which Rasulullah said about it, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like fasting. So when we understand this connection between fasting and patience, then we understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the reward for both of them in similar terms. The reward for patience is unlimited. Allah says in the Quran that indeed we repay and we reward those who are patient without any limits. No limits. There's no limits to the rewards of patience. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the reward for fasting? That as li wa ana ajzibi. That fasting is for me, and I will reward it, and I will give it due reward, meaning without any limit as well. They are described in these similar terms because they are similar concepts. Fasting, patience are similar concepts. So Allah gives the reward of, for those who are patient without any limits. And Allah gives the reward of those who fast because they exemplify this patience without any limit. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us our fasting and all our good deeds in the month of Ramadan. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم استغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. عائشة رضي الله عنها narrates that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم was the most generous of people. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس. He was the most generous of people. وأجود ما يكون في رمضان. And he was even more generous. He's already the most generous of people. And he's even more generous in the month of Ramadan. And the generosity of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم was something beyond our imagination. He would never say no to anyone. People would ask him for anything, and he would never say no. لا يرد سائلا. He would never turn away somebody who comes and asks for something. Once, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم was gifted a burda. He was gifted a garment. A woman came and she told Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم that I've gifted or I've woven this garment with my own two hands. And she gave it as a gift to him. 
فَأَخَذَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مُحْتَاجًا إِلَيْهِ And he took it, مُحْتَاجًا إِلَيْهَا He took it when he needed it. He was in need of it. Why did he need it? Because he was already giving everything he had away before. So he took this garment in need of it, in need of having a garment to wear. And it was a beautiful garment. And he came out to the people and they were all fascinated by the beauty of this garment. And a man came to, he stood up and he asked Rasulullah how beautiful this garment is. Can you give it to me? Can you give it to me? And whether without hesitation, Rasulullah said yes. And he stayed with the Sahaba for a while and he went back home, he changed his garment and he brought the new garment and he gave it to this individual, this companion. So the Sahaba who were with Rasulullah and they witnessed this incident, they started to berate this, uh, this man. And they started to criticize him. How could you ask him? You know that Rasulullah needed this garment. You know, you know that he does not turn away the, uh, the, when somebody asks him for something. He does not say no. So why would you go and put Rasulullah in a difficult situation like that? When you know that he does not say no. And they started to criticize him. And perhaps when we hear this hadith, we also feel a bit of uh, anger to that, towards that person. That he put Rasulullah in a difficult situation. But when we hear what this man says afterwards, then inshallah, then whatever feeling that we had towards this companion will go away. He, so they started to criticize him. And he said, why did you do this? When you know Rasulullah needs this garment, he does not say no to anybody. And he said to them, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, I did not ask for this garment because I wanted to wear it. I don't have any need to wear. But he said, rather I asked for this garment because I want to use it as a kathan for me when I die. I want to use it as my shroud. When I die, I want to be buried with this garment. And it was as he intended. And it was his garment. And it was his shroud the day that he passed away. So this shows the generosity of Rasulullah a new garment comes to him, only wears, barely wore it even one time. Somebody asks for it, he gives it away. And this is the nature of Rasulullah outside Ramadan. Inside Ramadan, he's even more generous. And he's even more generous in the month of Ramadan. What's the connection between increased generosity and Ramadan? The connection is we read the hadith further. When he would meet with Jibreel وَكَانَ جِبِرُولُ يَلْقَاهُ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَةً And Jibreel would meet him every single night مِنْ وَمَضَانَ فَيُدَارِسُهُ الْقُرْآنَ And they would recite the Qur'an, they would study the Qur'an The connection here is the Qur'an Qur'an, month of Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an شَهْرُ وَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an has been revealed In the month of Ramadan, we are reciting the Qur'an more we are listening to the Qur'an more. As a result, this increased Qur'an is increasing Iman. As Allah says in the Qur'an, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ The believers, they are those when Allah's name is mentioned, they feel a tremor in their hearts. وَإِذَا تُرِيَتَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ What happens when the, when the verses of Allah is recited to them? زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا They increase in their Iman. So the more Qur'an we recite, and the more Qur'an we listen to, the more the Iman is going up. The more the Iman is going up, the more the good deeds are going up. And including in that is the generosity and giving. And so this is why Rasulullah would even be more generous in the month of Ramadan. So if we feel or we find ourselves we're not as generous or we're not more generous in the month of Ramadan, let's go back to step number one, which is you're not getting enough Qur'an. You're not reading enough Qur'an or you're not listening to enough Qur'an. If you're not able to recite as much Qur'an as you would like, come and listen to the Qur'an. Come and stay and pray the taraweeh, the entire taraweeh with the Imam. And listen to the Qur'an being recited. If you find that your deeds are not increasing in the month of Ramadan, go back to this step number one. Maybe you, the Qur'an is not enough. You're not doing enough Qur'an, listening and reciting in the month of Ramadan. So it is the effect of the Qur'an which would cause Rasulullah to be even more generous uh, in the month of Ramadan. So if you are a miserly person outside of Ramadan, become generous, become generous in Ramadan. If you are already a generous person in the month of Ramadan, 
become even more generous. And there's no limit to generous. Only Allah is Al Karim. He is the most generous. We cannot get to the level of Al Karim. So there's always more to go. So increase in your generosity. If you're already generous, increase it. If you're miserly, then become generous in the month of Ramadan. If you find that you're not, uh, you're, you're not inclined to generosity, increase in your Quran. Increase in your recitation and listening of the Quran. This will increase in your Iman and it will increase you after that in good deeds. So there are many ways we can become generous or use this generosity in the month of Ramadan. Of course, we have the masjid. The masjid relies on the support of the members and the congregation. Support the masjid in the month of Ramadan. Donate generously in the month of Ramadan to the masjid so that we can continue to provide services, activities, educational activities for the people of the masjid, inshallah. And there are multiple other ways of generosity in the month of Ramadan. There's no shortage of poor people, people in need. And of course, we have the situation that is occurring in Palestine and other parts of the world where we see our Muslim brothers and sisters are in dire need of our generosity. So this is the month to increase in your generosity and do not hold back and do not fear poverty. Give and increase in your generosity in the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us our fasting and our salah and our qiyam and our dua, our sujood. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawwab al-rahim. Rabbana taqabbal minna siyamana wa qiyamana wa ruku'ana wa sujoodana wa tilawatana wa dua'ana wa saliha a'malina. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين في فلسطين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين في بلاد المسلمين اللهم امين ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين عباد الله يرحمكم الله ان الله يأمركم بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة